Hello and welcome to the stream. Why can I hear me myself? I think I have a problem somewhere. Oh, I know why. That's because I have my own stream behind. There we go. That's a very good start for a stream. Hello and welcome. If you came for the flutter uh, part, uh, part 10 of my series, then you might be disappointed because I forgot to change the stream information. So you might not know that I'm going to do some Python tonight. Um, and I'm going to try and not speak too loud because my daughter is sleeping next door. Hopefully she's uh, not going to wake up. If you see me just go away in a hurry, that's because she's uh, awakened. But hopefully uh, I'm going to be there the whole time. <laughs> uh, what are we doing tonight? Well, um, I uh, have been working on this project that I call Streamberry, which is um, a Python a uh, couple of programs um, that uh, aim, aim to uh, emulate or be used as a stream deck, uh, but just uh, using a Raspberry Pi and a 7 inch touch screen. Um, because uh, I have that and I, I don't have a stream deck, and I like to, you know, hack stuff. So. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm doing this. I have done two streams already um, about Streamberry. Uh, they are archived on YouTube. So you can go there, uh, frenchguy.ch slash YouTube, as it says on the screen, um, to, to see the, fir the first part. I have uh, made some uh, modifications. I've made some progress uh, since part two of this stream. And tonight we're going to hack the configuration editor, which is the uh, program that will help, um, you know, drag and drop icons um, just to define the buttons uh, as you would find on a Stream Deck um, software. So let's. Uh, Let's first let's say hello to Gorian in the chat. Thank you for being here already. And I'm going to switch to my main screen, and this is my glorious Visual Studio. Ooh, don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that! Yes, that. I need to focus on the editor. You don't need. I don't need to focus on OBS while I do that. So this is VS Code. I have. Uh, my extensions already installed. I've made a stream on the Ubuntu on Air channel uh, about two weeks ago uh, about configuring. It's PHP, but it has uh, a few uh, absolutely useful, uh, indispensable extensions that uh, I have installed in there. But right now, uh, I'm going to run my config editor so there we are uh, and i can drag uh, and drop icons and i can move those icons uh, where i want on the screen i can double click to remove them uh, eventually i'm gonna need some stuff here kind of like the um stream deck ui for linux that um Martin Wimpress has featured on his channel many times. But uh, yes, so what I have done right now is I have implemented the uh, save function. So if you go to file, save, then select file, I'm going to replace this one. And we can open that in a binary editor, uh, X editor. And we can have a look. It's all saved as a BMP. The icons are saved as BMP. So it's going to make a, for a, a huge config file. So my guess is I'm going to uh, compress that using a gzip or something. Uh, and my file is big Indian if you want to uh, watch, uh, kind of debug this file. So it starts with sbconf001, that's the tag. If I don't find that, when I read the file back, then it's an error. Then I have, um, uh, hey, Ubuntu on air. 
Thank you for the red. Uh, and uh, uh, what was that? Yes. So then it it prints. I have the specs here. Then it sends uh, for each page. It will send zero x one. Then the page number. So we have one and page zero. So that works. Then we've got mm, all the icons information, and then we've got an FE. And an icon starts with Derix 02, then the row and the colon where it's supposed to be. So 200, zero, zero, that's the top left corner. Then it's the uh, the length of the, the file. So I save that as a BMP in order to uh, not lose any quality. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna keep that, but so far that's what I uh, that's what I have uh, decided. So zero zero e five b e, and if we look over here, uh, it's a big Indian. Uh, that's a four bytes, so that's an int or u u int thirty two. So the data is fifty eight thousand eight hundred eight hundred and fourteen bytes long. So that's those those here, and then from here we need, we have uh, uh, what, what did I say? Uh, Fifty-eight of oh, uh, that's not very useful. I need to find well, <laughs> I need to find. Oh yes, it is. It is useful, I guess. Uh, Fifty-eight eight hundred and fourteen, and that's that. So I need to find out what's that that's 11 that's what 17 so 17 in decimal 17 uh mm, i can do better than that i can do better than that we have a computer and it has the most powerful tool ever created the calculator right hello ubuntu on air so we are at address uh 11 and we want to add E5BE. E. And so at address E5CF, we should have our next field. And since we only have one, um, one icon in this file, then it should be really near the end, if not the end. Uh, E5CF, E5C. F, that's there and we got FD and the specs says FD is the end of an icon so everything's okay and then we have an FE and the spec says FE is the end of a page and well we don't have anything else I should probably have a end of file marker hey <laughs> whoopsie yes probably more people from your from your own channel but that's great i mean i need three three of you as uh, on an average uh the more the merrier of course uh but uh i need to have an average of three viewers by the time i reach 50 followers so i'll take anything <laughs> all right uh yes i should i should add a marker uh for the end of file so let's do that let's go to my uh, widgets um my tab container or not not the tab container i am i guess uh where where is that it's here yes tab container save to file so the tab container writes uh and the tab container writes zero and an fe so that's the end of the Tab, but I need something to mark the end of the file, so that's probably going to be somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow, somewhere here. And I'm going to do file dot write, and that's going to be a byte array of a byte array of zero xff. Let's say, why not? Why not put zero xff in there? Uh, yeah, quit that. Restart that. Uh, 
I said restart that. Okay. Uh, bring one icon and save this config. Replace and have a look at the config. And now we have FFF as the last marker. Right. Let's, uh, well, I know it's working, but let, let's check that putting this icon in colon one row zero actually changes things. Yes, and uh, reload that. And if we go back to the beginning of the file, then uh, page zero, and uh, that's a um, icon. It's at zero one. So colon uh, row zero, row zero colon one. So that worked. Okay. So saving works. So now we need to implement loading and that doesn't really work as you may see. Thank you for the follow, John. Oh, the counter are uh, incremented. Great. You have been uh, the first beta live beta tester for this um, uh, follower go a little counter thingy at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for letting me know it does work. Okay, so creating this did create the page, but it didn't load the icons. Okay. Well, I guess I can live with that for now because I would like to see what happens when I have two pages and I save that and I'm going to uh, make a do a tour of the app in a moment because I have new followers some people that may not have been there before uh, yes yeah, so the file is suddenly twice as big as before because it now has two icons in there uh, but oh uh, what what went wrong uh, I guess my editor is confused it might be confused because it has been refreshed and it doesn't know that. Yes, that's much better. So FD, FE, FF. FF is the end of the file. FD is end of the page. And FE F is end of page. FD is end of icon. All right. So now let me just reopen this file and see if it actually creates two pages. File open. Conf. It does not. So it's broken. Um, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if it does increment when someone unfollows and then follows back. I have no idea. I know that I had to do, I had to set the uh, initial number. So probably the uh, stream stream element or stream lab don't know which one I used, uh, boat, boat, just gets the new subscriber event. <laughs> yeah, I guess Twitch doesn't send the uh, new subscriber event when it's uh, someone that unsub and subs back. Well, not sub, but unfollows and follows. Anyways, thanks, thanks for the QA control. Right, so what's what's this thing? You may you may wonder. That's the editor, the config editor for Streamberry. The so Streamberry is going to be a something that runs on Raspberry Pi with the seven inch uh, or bigger, but I have the seven inch touchscreen interface, and I'm going to drag and drop buttons here and and, and link some uh, behavior with the buttons, and that's going to act as a Stream Deck, but you know DIY Stream Deck. And so this is the config editor and how this thing works. Well, it's easy. There's no, uh, nothing to add icons from a file open dialog because that's boring, but you can drag and drop icons. You can drag and drop stuff like that. Ooh, fancy. And actually if the, the image is too big or too small, it's going to get resized, which is awesome. Uh, so, you can also move those icons uh, around. You cannot move an icon on an existing one, of course. You cannot drag an icon on an existing one. 
And if you double click, the icon goes away. And if you press the plus button here, you add some pages. And if you double click on a... Ah, okay, now that works. If you double click on the, the tab here, then the page goes away. And if I double click the three, page number four is going to be num page number three now. And so what I just did before is I created a two page config. And when I opened my config, well, it doesn't show anything. Partly because it hasn't been implemented and also partly because it's probably broken. So let's dive into the load uh, function. So I'm on my main window. I have subscribed to the load config signal and I am going to call self.loadconfig on the main window. And the load config signal is uh, a signal that is defined in the main menu and it is triggered, it is emitted, sorry, when the uh, action is triggered and this action is the open a config file menu item. So, main window, load config. Load config opens the dialog bo the box. If we didn't press console, and if we did, well, I don't print anything. Uh, it's, it's not an error, it's a user choice. So. Cute, yes, PyQt, PyQt5. PyQt5, and the Q thing is everywhere. Uh, self the status bar loading then we open the file and we read the tag so the specs I wrote specs do, do you realize I wrote specs uh, the tag should be sbconf01 uh, so I read the tag uh, and that's a constant that has sbconf01 tag equals files that read if tag equals equals file tag then I do stuff otherwise I just write not a config file on the uh, status bar uh, what do I do here I load file from uh, I, I tell the tab container to load file okay let's go and see that what's going to ha what's happening in there come on control click thank you so here we're in the tab container widget and we're going to load from the file. First, we need to remove any existing pages. Yes, we remove everything. Then we reset our page counter. Now we check for a page marker in the file. So we read the we read one byte from the file, and if that is zero x zero one, it means we are uh, we are at the beginning of a page. Uh, otherwise, well should probably do some error checking and handling but for now that's gonna be good good now let's check that we are the correct page page number equals file read yes so that's just to see if there's a a, a problem with the file it's just a sanity check so page number if we go to the spec that's gonna be the next byte uh, that should correspond to the current page. So if page number equals equals current page, everything is okay, all good, we can create an empty page. New page equals page itself, self insert tab, and then self set current index. And that's the reason why it doesn't do anything else, it's because it stops there. All right, um, so we have the page number, good. And now the specs says that we've got the icons, and for each icon, we need a 0 to uh, thing. So, oh, I sh should probably delegate the loading of a page to say the page. I just created it so now it can load itself. New page dot load from file. Let's write this load from def load from self file and that file is gonna be a 
buffered reader. And it returns nothing. Okay. Uh, what should this page do? It should check that it starts with zero, zero 02. So, check the page tag. Uh, what? How did I do that here? Because I like to copy and paste my code. Page marker. No, that's not a page. Is that the page marker? Zero 01? Zero one is a page marker. Yes, it's the icon marker that I need. Yes. Check the icon marker. Icon marker equals file dot read one of zero. If icon marker equals equals zero x zero two, then we are good. We need to read the row and colon uh, associated to that um, icon. So uh, row equals file dot read one and column equals file dot read one zero. I could read two and then I could do that. Buffer equals file dot read two and then row equals it's gonna be more efficient even though well it's uh just two bytes buffer and buffer that should give us the row and the column then we have four bytes that makes a int and that's the length of the data we need to read and so that's uh, how do I turn a byte array into an int well it is time for the live google search of the stream python 3 see you were complaining earlier john that uh, people wouldn't be interested in seeing you google stuff well that's what i do <laughs> Python 3 byte array to int. Convert bytes to int. And this nice person says int dot from bytes. There we go. That's so easy. Uh, buffer equals equals file dot read four. And len equals int from bytes buffer hmm doesn't seem to be happy with that byte order mm, yes byte order what byte order did i use big okay well, let's use big there we go and that should give us the length of our data yes indeed it goes with the, the territory it is impossible to know everything I think. And the most important thing I've always said to anyone who asked me is not to know everything, but just know enough so that you can look for what you don't know. I'm going to print len just for the sake of checking if things are okay. Um, and now let's just ignore the the data for now so we're going to do file.read then so we're going to skip the data for this icon and then the spec says that we should find a 0xfd marker so the end of icon marker equals file.read of one and read one and take zero take the first one and uh, if um, of icon marker equals equals zero x uh, fd then pass and um, damn it and else pass that's not very 
useful. It's just a placeholder. Oh. Was that a boat? <laughs> that boat just timed out John. <laughs> Stop spamming him out. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, my nightbot is as mean as yours was with me. <laughs> Uh, I shall get into Nightbot's settings and see uh, if I can whitelist some people. I don't know. You have more experience than me with Nightbot. Alright, so now we should have the, that. Let's pretend that everything is going to be alright. And once we have finished this icon, then... Then, if next tag is FE, then we have finished the page. Uh, if it's 0 then there's another another icon. So that's where we need to get smart. We need to get smart here because... Uh, here we need a loop. Here we need a loop. Uh, I think neighbor and put it about or whatever it's called that verbally abuses you from time to time. I've been exchanging learning models. <laughs> pasta bot. That's pasta bot. Yeah, so we need a loop because when we load a page, we need to load a bunch of icons. So, uh, so what? So. Uh, why true do that except except here we may very well be at uh, here we may we may be here Oh, we may be here. So, instead of reading this, we're going to pick at this. And pick sends a... Right, yes, so that's the same thing, except if it's that, then we need to skip. To seek. Seek one. All right, and if not... Then let's do this like that. Done. Bool equals false. While not not done. We do that. We do that, and that means if your icon marker is that else. Then equals true. Damn it. Okay. And that should nicely build the first page. And yes, I know what's wrong. Method could be a function. Yeah, could be. Uh, and so we do that. We read the icon. Do we have a 0 2 No, we don't. We're going to have an FE. And so if we get an FE, we, we're done. And so we go back from, we go back to where we were previously. And that's here. And here. So we finished loading the page. And we should have our FE over here. Uh, yes, if page number is not current page, then we probably have a problem here. And so we have read our page, so now we need to read the next byte and check that it is indeed this. 
file.read1 of 0 and that's gonna be the end of page marker equals and if end of page marker equals equals that then we'll do something interesting else we'll probably do something that is less interesting but we're done we're done with the page and so we also need a loop here uh, we also need to increment current page because we've uh, we are finished with that so that's what we're going to do here current page plus equals one and we need to go back here and do the same thing done bool equals false while not done do this and then done into a kind of private variable same with current page same with this same with this same with this although it doesn't make any sense in python but i like to do that last about is all right little mad science creation yes i'd like to talk to you about that at some point but what but about past about past about and mine it's a riggy's boat so Um, my Fitbit says my watch batteries are low. Nowadays, you need to recharge everything. You know, you need to recharge your ears, your ears, your watch, your phone, your whatever, your lawnmowers, batteries. Everything needs to be recharged. Uh, where was I? Yes. So we're not done. Okay, and uh, we're going to do the same thing here. Page marker equals one but it can be and tag we decided that it's that that was gonna be ff so if we don't have 0x01 then we probably have that and that means we are done so that's gonna be a pick and then if that's okay then we need to seek and then else else uh, done equals true all right so uh we should be there okay that was the load on the tab container and then the main window and the main window not not the main window See the main window, not the main menu, the main window. We were here. So it's worth checking that the last byte is a Xerix FF just to make sure that the file was not corrupted. So, and of file marker equals file.read1 of zero and um, well if and the file marker is not what well, is ff pass and um, else pass right let's see oh i have already have a, a print some print statement somewhere somewhere Print, okay, F. Equals that. Okay. And I have another one here, then, okay. So that's the, the one that comes from the config file and there should be identical otherwise we have a problem so let's press f5 and do that 
E. That is not what I was expecting. It, it's working even less than before. <laughs> great job, great job. After uh, 38 minutes of strings, I managed to have a, something that works less than it was working before. Uh oh, awesome is that. F5, let's try that again. See what's, what's what I did wrong. Okay, so with open tag, tag equals, okay, the tag is the file. Now we're going to tap container and we're trying to load. We're removing all the tabs, okay. Current page equals zero. Turning on false. Why not done? So we're working. Page marker is one, zero x was a one. So that's good. We seek one and then page number is 98. So that is probably not what I wanted or there is something wrong with my config file. Why do we have 98? Okay, so that's why. Seek is, is not skip. Seek is not skip. And there's no skip, so read. Okay, stop. And seek, seek apparently sets the, the absolute position of the file pointer. So seek, that's all I have. Let's run it that again. File open. Let's open the config. Uh, we know this is working, so we can just fast forward and see what we have. Oh, page object has no attribute load form. Really? Load from? Page? Load from? Load form! Oh, load form. Yeah, easy mistake. Load form, so that's load from. I'm surprised the uh, linter didn't didn't tell me that that page should have seen that that was a mistake file open yay we have two pages hee <laughs> except this should not be page two this should be two and not page two so what what went wrong here so I guess I can remove that. I can remove that. And insert tab. Uh, yes. That's not... That is not right. Uh... Label equals label equals. We want page only for page zero, which is page one. So page equals page space if current current page why why why. If current page equals equals zero, else okay, so that works, and uh, I want that. Can I put that in one of those fancy strings? I don't think I can do that. Uh, it's not dollar sign, it's uh, curly brace. Ooh, look at that. I can do that. And then I want current page plus one. Apparently I can do that. Which is awesome. So I just need, I don't need a label. I just need to get that here. There we go. Yes, Gorian. F strings are a lifesaver. 
Uh, what's wrong here? Line is too long. Well, then Control Shift I and it's no longer too long. It is now formatted just like it should be. Okay, so F5, let's try that again. File, open, sample is become. Yes, great. Now I want the page zero to be in, in focus. So, I'm going to say that, uh, what's that? That's the tab container. So when the tab container is downloading stuff, it resets the index to zero. The five file open. Okay. Now we need to put those icons back in there. Ah, great. So. So in page we have we have skipped the creation of the pixmap, but we do have the data. Now the question here is uh, how do I load a pixmap from from some dat data? I'm guessing the same way I saved the pixmap. So something like that, maybe? All right, so this is the uh, I, improve, uh, I, I improve live on stream. So I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to try something and it may or may not work. It probably won't work, but... Okay, so we need a byte array, right? We need a buffer from that byte array. We need to open this buffer in... In what? No, I don't need to do that, actually. I need to... No. What the Pixmap set has... Uh, Pixmap... It doesn't even know what Pixmap is. Because I haven't defined the Pixmap yet. That's a QPixmap. Okay. And uh, what can that do? We can load the pixmap, good, with a file name. And that's not what I want. So what else does it has? Load. Does it load from... Ah, look at that. Load from data. It takes a byte and a format. Well, we do have the bytes. They're here and we know the format. That's BMP. Would that be enough? Uh, would that be enough? I probably don't need that. What does that returns? That returns a boolean. So loaded equals if loaded. Okay, it, it has been loaded. So now just make the compiler not complain. We need to assign that pixmap to a row and a column. And we can do that because we have a grid layout. And in this grid layout, we can do that. Oh, but that's a drop target. No, the drop target is already there. Uh -huh. So what do I do when I drop? What do I do when I drop a a pix map on there? I call set pix map, and I give it a pix map. Uh, so I do set pix map on the drop target. Okay. So I need to create a drop target or did it create 
it was it created already it has already yeah it was already created but what i know is that at grid layout row colon i can get my drop target and then i do a set pix map on that let's see let's see here if loaded uh, save that grid layout dot get widget uh, is it get widget i don't think it's get widget is it get widget no it's not uh i have done that somewhere where i have uh, when i save this thing i get the drop target here that's that's what i need that's what i need uh here uh self dot grid layout item at position row column and then drop target is item dot widget and then drop target that set pix map and I can pass the pix map let's uh, run that file open oh ho 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 and I can even move that now well 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 look at that we can save and open a config file let's replace this file and since it's uh, saved in as bmp the icons won't uh, won't get you know uh how do you I, I don't know how to say that uh Uh, we won't lose quality. Awesome. Awesome. Let's add some widgets, icons in there. Random icons. For oh yes. Uh, also, transparency. Uh, just to show. Transparency works. Of course, it does. It had to. Uh, let's add this one and uh, this one and uh, this one is not there in there this one is not in there and uh, yeah that's pretty much it uh, save this config file okay and now this file is this file is way too big probably And uh, sample that has become this file is oh it's 587k that's not bad that's not that bad however i'm pretty sure we can um open jzip j jzip jzip streams in python so it's time to ask our friend google um python 3 jz output buffer i don't know oh, the jz module provides the jzpy class as well as the open compress and decompress convenience function the jzpy class reads and writes jzip format files automatically compressing and decompressing the data that it looks like an ordinary file object that is so awesome. So let's do that. What's wrong with this? And use write import from OS. Okay. Let's then not use that. And import jzip. Okay. And how do I use that? 
jzip.open. Okay. So I guess... Hmm. I want to... I want to... Do, 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 do. What do I want? I want to change the save function and not the load function because I want to load this and save it back as a jzip file just so I can compare the, f the size here. Okay, so that's the save function that I need. I need that in my main window. Main window here, save config here. And in instead of open, I sh probably should do jzip.open. But then it says jzip file cannot be assigned to a parameter file of type, of type buffer writer. Right. So that's a jzip file that I need here. I need a jzip file okay uh, that needs a jzip file too okay so far so good let's uh let's open a terminal uh or actually i can do a plus uh fish by default and uh, Okay, so that's the non jzipped file, and then F5, and then file open, and then file save. Well, actually, I can call that sample 2 or sample jzip. And if I go back here, I can now compare that with that. And we went from 587k to 43k, so it's uh, a good improvement, uh, which means now we can't read that back because load load the load function in the main window. Don't I have a an Outlook view uh, from the project over here hmm. with the classes? Well, maybe not. Uh, I want I want the main window and I want the load config, and that will be jzip.open. Okay, and now, of course this is not working because this wants a jzip file. Um, I guess that's what it wants, and then that wants a jzip file too. Now jzip is it jzip in, in English? Gzip, I guess. A GNU zip. Let's call that a GNU zip file. And do F5. Uh, no, it's not F5 because it was already running. But anyway, and now we can open this file. And ta-da! Awesome. Awesome. Okay, I have... Oh. Oh. Oh, because I saved the icons as BMP, I lost the transparency in there. Huh. Is PNG destructive? Yeah, shiny. Shiny, but it should be transparent here. <laughs> No, indeed, not R shiny, but still shiny. I am, I am happy with that. Although I'm not happy with the fact that I've lost the transparency. Um. So my guess is instead of BMP, I should probably use PNG. Which also means I cannot use my existing config file oh well i could if i was well i've lost the, the transparency already so that's uh there's no point let's try again so transparency is working file save uh let's uh, replace this one file open and we we still have the transparency oh that's funny 
when I drag the icons from from there, there's no border around it. But when I bring them from the the uh, file explorer, then it has a border. Huh. Well, I can live with that. I don't need the the border. File, save, replace, file, open. Oh, what happens if I open this? Well, it crashes, which is not very pretty. It should not. So it did crash here in Gzip. 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 Gnuzip. <laughs> Uh, and it crashed here because I did that. Uh, I opened the file and I... So opening worked. PNG is lossless. Well, thank you for this information and welcome to the stream. So P if PNG is lossless, then that's great. That's awesome. I can uh, still use PNG and load and save and load and save and save and save uh, but I need to I need to do something like try that and catch uh, catch what a j z uh, I don't even remember how to operate to catch lock in python catch e as is that is that how we do that no that's the opposite that's not catch that except there we go it finally came back uh, so what do we do if we have that? We need to, well, first we need to self.statusbar dot show message uh, not a valid config valid config file. Okay. Let's try again. File open. Not a valid config file. Okay. So now, what? Uh, how how do I display a modal dialog in PyQt five? PyQt five show mm, modal message box. There we go. How do we create the metal window in? Bah, it's not a model window, but by the you could you could not use exec. However, it is better to use exec underscore as the one. Uh, is it though? Cute message box. Q message box is exactly what I want. I think. And I use it like that. So I probably want to close that and I probably want... What's wrong with you? And use variable EX. Yes, well. Just ignore that then. And let's create a message. Okay, control space to auto import that. Uh, that icon icon is a message box dot icon dot something probably that I'd say it's it's pretty critical right when you're trying to load a config file that is not a config file so I'd go with critical and uh, this is a message box, yes. Well, uh, not a 
Valid config file. And I have written the same message twice, which means three times, which means I probably need to have something that is that will hold this message for me. Set informative text. This is additional information. Set Windows title, message box demo. And set detail text. Let's see what that does. What does? What does? It does nothing because I probably have to call some method to show it. What, what does our uh, friend say that we need to set the buttons and those are QMessage standard buttons. Okay, and cancel. And yeah, we'll do that later. And that. And that just for the fun. Okay. And when you not value pass to message box button with that. But in Python that's the way we do that. And I messed up. There we go. Five. File open. And crash. Okay, is it exec then? So I know sometimes they change stuff between. Ah! There you go. Not a valid config file. This is additional information that I probably. Oh, I can put the file name in there. Show details. Mm, I don't. I don't want that. So. Um, okay. Cancel. Icon. Text. Window title. Standard buttons. Okay. An error occurred. You know, those are the, the, those messages. Uh, an error occurred, or something like that. Uh, it's like when you read the release notes from some very important stuff, like apps you have on your phone, and all you get is uh, performance improvement and bug fixes. Well, duh. You're not gonna make a new release to make the application slower and introduce new bug. Not a very config file. That is right, but I want that at, in the middle of this, so it should probably be parented. And let's do that again. Ta da! Awesome. Not a very config file. I don't need console, actually. I just need OK, because there's nothing you can do. So let's remove console, and I just want okay. Yeah, like, yeah, okay. I admit I'm an idiot. Ah, uh, there we go. An error queue, not a valid config file. And now if I open a valid config file, then I've got everything. Woot woot. Woot woot. Well. It's been an hour and seven minutes. I think it's a pretty good, uh, a pretty reasonable time for a stream. What do you mean they didn't intend to? Just because they say application improvement and bugs doesn't mean they didn't slow the app down and introduce new bugs. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but you're not going to admit that. And as you said, they probably didn't intend to. To be fair, each time you introduce new functionalities, you're probably slowing down a little bit your uh, application. Yeah, it's called programming. Indeed, let's bring the chat on the on the screen because I haven't done that tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, introducing new functionalities uh, means that you probably slow down your your app. And uh, that's the that's the sad truth you know you start you have like three or four functionalities maybe uh, uh, just one single thread and 
you don't do do much you know you don't you don't have like hundreds of events uh running through your app and then suddenly you you add a you know, i don't know subscription to one event and you forgot to remove the let's talk python you forgot to remove the widget that is listening to the event and then you create more and more and more widgets and then suddenly without uh, you know wanting that you've just slowed your application down but hey that's uh that's what quality control is there for right quality assurance well i'm going to stop the stream here uh it's uh almost half past midnight uh, it's time to go to bed the little one is not gonna wait until 10 tomorrow to wake up so <laughs> Gotta get to bed. Uh, gotta walk the, the dog first and then go to bed. Thanks everyone for joining the stream. Thanks for following. Uh, if you liked your con this content, then come back. I will do more Python and more Flutter. And also, if you know someone that might be interested, uh, please uh, send them this way. I, as you can see. Uh, at the bottom of the, of the screen, I'm 11 followers uh, away from almost getting uh, affiliate. So, you know, tell your mom, tell your dog, tell your sister, tell everyone you know. <laughs> Even if they just lurk in the channel, that's okay. Oh, thank you, Stream Element, right on time. Anyway. Thank you everyone for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, this has been a live stream recorded on the 20... Well, it started on 24th of September and it ended on the 25th of September, Zurich time. Uh, I guess it's still the 24th somewhere in the world. But anyway, follow me on Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, even though I don't post anything on Instagram just yet. And I will... See you in the next stream, probably tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining. Cheers.